And we are back with part two of the painting's iceberg. This part is going to get some more not safe for work entries, so I won't show the painting when talking about them. But anyways, let's just get going. Saturn Devouring His Son is a name given to a painting by Spanish artist Francisco Goya. According to the traditional interpretation, it depicts the Greek myth of Titan Kronos in the title Romanized to Saturn, who, fearing that he would be overthrown by one of his children, ate each one upon their birth. The work is one of the 14 black paintings that Goya painted directly onto the walls of his house sometime between 1819 and 1823. It was transferred to canvas after Goya's death and has since been held in the Museo del Prado in Madrid. The Course of Empire is a series of five paintings created by Thomas Cole in the years 1833 and 1836. It is notable in part for reflecting popular American sentiments of the time. When many saw pastoralism as the ideal phase of human civilization, fearing that empire would lead to gluttony and inevitable decay, the theme of psychos is one that Cole returned to frequently, such as in his Voyage of Life series. The Course of Empire comprises the following works. Course of Empire, the Savage State, the Arcadian or Pastoral State, the consumption of empire, destruction, and desolation. The Nightmare is a 1781 oil painting by Anglo Swift's artist Henry Fuseli. It shows a woman in deep sleep with her arms thrown below her, with a demonic and ape like incubus crouched on her chest. The painting's dreamlike and haunting erotic evocation of inflation and obsession was a huge popular success. After its first exhibition at the 1782 Royal Academy of London, critics and patrons reacted with horrified fascination and the work became widely popular. To the extent that was parodied in political satire and an engraved version was widely distributed. In response, Fuseli produced at least three other versions. Okay. Ivan the Terrible and his son, Ivan, on 16th of November 1581 is a painting by Russian realist artist Lea Repin between 1883 and 1885. The work is variously referred as Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan with or without the date, or Ivan the Terrible killing his son. The picture portrays a grief-stricken Ivan the Terrible cradling his mortally wounded son, the Sarvich Ivan Ivanovich. The elder Ivan himself is believed to have dealt with a fatal blow to his son. The artist used Gregory Masayodov, probably butchered that, his friend and fellow artist, as the model for Ivan the Terrible, with writer Vizvoled Garshin modeling for the Sarvich in 1885. Upon completion of the oil on canvas work, Repin sold it to Pavel Trekiov for display in his gallery. Necronom 4 by H.R. Geiger shows this alien creature, which is now the basis of the xenomorph from the Alien franchise. Prior to writing the script, to Alien, screenwriter Dan O'Bannon had worked in France for Chilean director Alejandro. Jodorowsky plans adaptation of Frank Herbert's classic science fiction novel, Dune. Also hired for the project was a Swiss serialist artist, H.R. Geiger. Geiger showed O'Bannon his nightmarish monochromic artwork, which left O'Bannon deeply disturbed. To quote, 
I have never seen anything that was quite as horrible and the same time as beautiful as his work. He remembered later. The Doom film collapsed, but O'Bannon would remember Geiger when Alien was greenlit and suggested to director Ridley Scott that he should be brought on to design the aliens, saying that if he were to design a monster, it would be truly original. Sorrowing Old Man or Eternity's Gate is an oil painting by Vincent van Gogh that he made in 1890 in Saint-Rémy de Provence based on an early lithograph. The painting was completed in early May at a time when he was convalescing from a severe relapse in his health some two months before his death, which is generally accepted as a suicide. Dante and Virgil is an 1850 oil on canvas painted by French academic painter William Adolphe Bouguereau. It is on display at the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. The painting depicts a scene from the Divine Comedy which narrates the journey through hell by Dante and his guide Virgil. In the scene, the author and his guide are looking at, on as two damned souls are entwined in eternal combat. One of the souls is an alchemist and heretic named Capuccio. He is being bitten on the neck by the trickster Gianni Schicchi who had been used fraud to claim another man's inheritance. The Elephants is a 1948 painting by the Spanish surrealist artist Salvador Dali. The Elephant is a recurring theme in the works of Dali, first appearing in his 1944 work Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around the Pomegranate a Second Before Awakening. And also in The Temptation of St. Anthony and Swan's Reflecting Elephants. The elephants differ from the other paintings in that the animals are the primary focus of the work. With a barren graduated background and a lack of other content, where most of Dolly's paintings can name much detail and points of interest. The stork-legged elephant is one of the best-known icons of Dolly's work. Next is this very wholesome artwork by Zhu Jie. Yes, very wholesome indeed. <laughs> the Triumph of Death is a oil painting by Peter Bruegel of the Elder, painting circa 1562. It has been in the Museo del Prado in Madrid since 1827. The painting shows a panorama of an army of skeletons wrecking havoc across a black and desolate landscape. Fires burn in the distance and the sea is littered with shipwrecks. A few leafless trees stud hills otherwise bare of vegetation. Fish lie rotting on the shores of a corpse choke. Upon. Artist historian James Snyder emphasizes the scorched barren earth devoid of any life as far as the eye can see. In this setting, legions of skeletons advance on the living who either flee in terror or try in vain to fight back. In the foreground, skeletons haul wagon full of skulls in the upper left corner. Others ring the bell that signifies the death now of the world. People are herded into coffin-shaped trap decorated with crosses while a skeleton on horse back kills people with a scythe. The painting depicts people of different social backgrounds from peasants to soldiers to nobles as well as a king and a cardinal being taken by death indiscriminately. The Suez of Dorothy Hale is a painting by Frida Kahlo depicting the Suez of Dorothy Hale, a woman who committed not live in 1938. Hale's friend Claire Booth Luce, an ardent admirer of Mexican artist Frida Kahlo, almost immediately commissioned Kahlo to paint a 
rem remembrance p portrait of their deceased mutual friend. So that in Kyle's words, her life must not be forgotten. Luce understood a uh, recurred to be idealized memorial portrait and was doubtless expecting a conventional over the file for pace portrait for her $400. After being shown in March in Paris, the completed painting arrived in August 1939. Luce claims she was so shocked by the unwrapped painting that she almost passed out. What Kahlo created was a graphic narrative retablo detailing every step of Hale's suicide. It depicts Hale standing on the balcony falling to her death while also laying on the bloody pavement below. Luce was so offended that she seriously considered destroying it, but instead she had the sculpture Isamu no Gucci paint out the part of the legend that bore Lucy's name. Luce simply left the work crated up in the care of Frank Crowninshield, only to be presented with it again decades later when Crown and Shield Hears discovered it in storage. She donated it anonymously to the Phoenix Art Museum, where it was eventually outed as a loose donation. The museum retains ownership, although the painting is frequently on tour in exhibitions of Kahlo's work. The 3rd of May, 1808, is a painting completed in 1814 by the Spanish painter Francisco Goya. Now in the Museo del Prado in Madrid, in the work Goya sought to commemorate Spanish resistance to Napoleon's army during the occupation of 1808 in the Peninsular War. Along with its companion piece of the same size, the 2nd of May, 1808. It was commissioned by the provisional government of Spain at Goya's suggestion. The frame is a 1938 self-portrait of Frida Kahlo. The painting is notable as the first work by a 20th century Mexican artist to be purchased by a major international museum. Well, it was acquired by the Louvre in 1939. The painting is now shown at the Musée National d'Art Modern in the Center Pompidou in Paris. Okay, I'm not going to show this one, but Le Origin du Monde is a picture painted in oil on canvas by the French artist Gustave Coubert in 1866. It is a close-up view of the genitals and abdomen of a naked woman laying on bed with legs spread. The Wedding Feast at Cana by Pablo Veronese is a representative painting that depicts the biblical story of the marriage at Cana at which, the, at which Jesus converts water to wine. Executed in the Mannerist style of the late Renaissance, the large format oil painting comprehends the stylistic ideal of compositional harmony as practiced by the artists Leonardo, Raphael, and Michelangelo. The art of the High Renaissance emphasized human figures of ideal proportions, balanced composition, and beauty whereas mannerism exaggerated the Renaissance ideals of figure, light, and color, of asymmetrical and unnaturally elegant arrangements achieved by flattening the pictorial space and distorting the human figure as an ideal preconception of the subject, rather than a realistic representation. Prowling Death is a painting by Polish painter Zizabla Bezkinsk. 
It depicts this monkey thing walking on an apocalyptic earth. I can no longer be a bride is this painting by Yuko Tatsushima. Mural is a large painting by American artist Jackson Pollock. Although signed and dated 1943, the signature and date were not added until 1947, and the work was probably completed around the fall of 1943. It was made with oil paint and linen and is Pollock's largest canvas. The work was commissioned by Peggy Guggenheim for the long entrance hall of her townhouse at 155th East 61st Street in New York City. The unfinished portrait of Franklin D. Roosevelt is a watercolor Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States, by Elizabeth Shumatov. Shumatov was commissioned to paint a portrait of Roosevelt and started her work around new April 12, 1945. At lunch, Roosevelt complained of a headache and subsequently collapsed. The president, who had suffered a cerebral hemorrhage, died later that day. Shumatov never finished the portrait, but she later painted a new, largely identical one based on memory. The unfinished portrait hangs in Roosevelt's retreat, the Little White House in Warm Springs, Georgia, with its finished counterpart besides it. The Seasons, or the Four Seasons, is a set of four paintings produced in 1563, 1572, and 1573 by Giuseppe Arp. Kimboldo. He offered this set to Maximilian II, a Holy Roman Emperor, in 1569, accompanying the four elements, another painting by Arakimboldo. Each shows a profile picture made of fruit, vegetables, and plants relating to the relevant seasons. The set was accompanied by a poem by Giovanni Battista Fanetto explaining their allegorical meaning. Only winter and summer survived from the original work. The Louvre has a full set of the copies made by the painter for Maximilian to send to Augustus of Saxony. These have a floral frame not used in the original version. Spring also survives from a set for Philip II of Spain. It is now in the Rio Academia de San Fernando in Madrid. Vertumnus is an oil painting produced by once again Giuseppe Arcimboldo in 1591 that consists of multiple fruits, vegetables, and flowers that come together to parade up portrait of Holy Rem and Emperor Rudolf II. Although Archimboldo's colleagues commented that Vertumnus was skirtzo or humorous, there were intentional political meanings behind the piece, particularly regarding the choice of fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Archimboldo's choice to include these items was also an intentional reference to the Roman god Ver Vertuminus. This painting should be in tier one, but I digress. The Lady with an Ermine is a portrait painting widely attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, dated circa 1489 to 14. 91. The work is painted in oil on a panel of walnut wood. Its subject is Cecilia Gallerani, a mistress of Ludoviso Savorza, 
Duke of Milan. Leonardo was painter to the Sforza court in Milan at the time of its execution. It is the second of only four surviving portraits of women painting by Leonardo. Poppy Flowers is a painting by Vincent van Gogh with an estimated value of 50 million US dollars to 55 million dollars. It was stolen from Cairo's Mohammed Mohammed Kali Museum twice. First in 1977 and recovered after a decade and then again in August 2010 and has yet to be found. The Assumption of the Virgin is a large altarpiece panel painting in oils by the Italian Renaissance artist Titian. Painted in 1515 to 1518, it remains in the position it was designed for. On the high altar of Basilica di Santa Maria Gloriosa del Ferrari, or Ferrari Church in Venice. It is the largest altarpiece in the city, with the figures well over life size, necessitated by the large church with a considerable distance between the altar and congregation. The images above and below are not Titian's work, they are by Paula Vecchio. It marked a new direction in Titian's style that reflected his awareness from the developments of the high Renaissance painting for herself in Florence and Rome. Now on to tier four. Salvatore Mundi is a painting attributed in whole or in part to the Italian high Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci, stated circa 1499 or 1510. Long thought to be a copy of the last original veiled with overpainting, it was rediscovered, restored, and included in Luke Sison's major Leonardo da Vinci exhibition in the National Gallery in London. The painting depicts Jesus in an in a contrastic blue Renaissance dress, making the sign of the cross with his right hand while holding a transparent, not refracting crystal orb in his left, signaling his role as Salvatore Mundi and representing the celestial spear of the heavens. Approximately 30 copies and variations of the work by students and followers of Leonardo have been identified. Preparatory chalk and ink drawings of the Drapery by Leonardo were held in the British Loyal Collection. The painting was sold at an auction for 450.3 million US dollars on November 15th, 2017, setting a new record for most expensive painting ever sold at a public auction. Hands Resist Him is a painting that was created by artist Bill Stoneham and 1972. It depicts a young boy and a female doll standing in front of a glass panel door against which many hands are pressed. According to Stoneham, the boy is based on a photograph of himself at age five. The doorway is a representation of the dividing line between the waking world and the world of fantasy and impossibilities, while the doll is a guide that will escort the boy through it. The titular hands represent alternate lives or possibilities. The painting became the subject of an urban legend and viral internet meme in February 2000 when it was posted for sale on eBay along with a description implying it was haunted. Man proposes, God disposes is an 1864 on canvas painting by Edwin Lancier. The work was inspired by the search of for Franklin's lost ep expedition, which disappeared in the Arctic after 
1845. The scene shows two polar bears among the scattered wreckage of the expedition. A telescope, a tattered remains of a red ensign, a sail, and human bones, which William Michael Rossetti called the saddest of membra disjecta. The image shows humanity and civilization defeated by nature, red in tooth and claw, and can be seen as a commentary on the crisis of British triumphalism and imperialism in the middle of the 19th century. The painting is in the collection of Royal Holloway University of London and is a subject of superstitious urban myth that the painting is haunted. Soft Construction with Boiled Beans is a painting by Salvador Dali. Dali created the piece to represent the horrors of the Spanish Civil War, having painted it only six months before the conflict began. He subsequently claimed that he was aware the war was going to occur long before it began and cited his work as evidence as the prophetic power of his subconscious mind. However, some have speculated that Dali may have changed the name of the painting after war to emphasize his prophetic assertions, although it's not entirely certain. Portrait of a Young Man is a painting by Raphael. It's often thought to be a self-portrait. During the Second World War, the painting was stolen by Nazis from Poland Many stories regard it as the most important painting missing since World War II. The portrait is an oil on panel, probably from 1513 to 1514, as by the Italian High Renaissance old master painting and architect Raffaello Sanzio del Ubino, better known simply as Raphael. The subject's identity is unverified, but many scholars have traditionally regarded it as Raphael's self-portrait. The facial features are perceived by specialists as compatible with, if not clearly identical to, the only undoubted self-portrait by Raphael in his fresco, The School of Athens at the Vatican, identified as such by Vasari. If it is a self-portrait, no hint is given of Raphael's profession. The portrait shows a richly dressed and casually poised young man. The concert is a painting by Dutch artist Johannes Vermeer, depicting a man and two women performing music. It belonged to Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, but was stolen in 1990 and remains missing. Experts believe it may be the most valuable stolen object in the world. It was valued at 250 million U.S. dollars. The Storm on the Sea of Galilee is a 1633 oil on canvas painting by the Dutch Golden Age painter Rembrandt van Rijn. It was previously in the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, but was stolen in 1990 and remains missing. The painting depicts the biblical story of Jesus calming the storm on the Sea of Galilee, specifically as it is described in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Is Rembrandt's only seascape. The Crying Boy is a mass-produced print of a painting by Italian painter Giovanni Bragolin. This was the pen name of the painter Bruno Amarillo. It was widely distributed from the 1950s and onwards. It is here mainly because of urban legend saying it is cursed. On September 5th, 1985, the British tabloid newspaper The Sun reported that an Essex firefighter claimed that the undamaged copies of the painting were frequently found amidst the ruins of burned houses. 
By the end of November, belief in the painting's curse was widespread enough that the sun was organizing mass bonfires of the painting, sent in by readers. Steve Punt, a British writer and comedian, investigated the curse in a BBC Radio 4 production called Punt Pie. The conclusion is that the prints were treated with varnish containing fire retardant, and that the string holding the painting to the wall would be the first one to deteriorate, resulting in the painting landing face down on the floor and thus being protected. Madonna and Child is, was a painting by one of the most influential artists of the late 13th and early 14th century, Duccio di Bugasenga. This iconic image of Madonna and Child seen throughout history of Western art holds significant value in terms of stylistic innovations of religious subject matter that would continue to evolve for centuries. The Trumpeter is another painting by Beksinski. It shows a creepy figure playing a horn of some sort with the figure's many fingers on it. The Death of the Virgin is a painting by the Italian Baroque master Caravaggio depicting the death of the Virgin Mary. It is part of the permanent collection of Yezidu in Paris. The picture of Dorian Gray is a photo by Ivan Albright in 1943. Albright was commissioned to create the titular painting for Albert Lewin's film adaptation of Oscar Wilde's picture of Dorian Gray. His naturalistic, exaggerated depictions of decay made him suited to create a the image of the corrupted Dorian. His brother was originally chosen to do the beginning uncorrupted painting of Gray. However, the painting used in the final film was from Henrik Medina. When changes to Medina's painting were needed to show Gray's fall, Albright painting them. His painting of Corrupted Dorian Gray currently resides in the Art Institute of Chicago. The Card Players is a series of oil paintings by the French post-impressionist artist Paul Cezanne. Painting during Cezanne's final period in the early 1890s, there are five paintings in the series. The Virgin's variant size, the number of players, and the setting in which the game takes place. Cezanne also completed numerous drawings and studies in preparation for the Card Player series. This is another one that should be in the first video, but whatever. Portrait of Dr. Gachette is one of the most revered paintings by Vincent van Gogh. It depicts Dr. Paul Gachette, a uh, homeopathic doctor and artist with whom Van Gogh resided following a spell in an asylum at St. Remy de Provence. Gachette took care of Van Gogh during the final months of his life. There are two authenticated versions of the portrait, both painted in June 1890 at a Vursur both show Gachette sitting on the table and leaning his head on his right arm, but they are easily differentiated in color and style. Beauty Revealed is just a painting of boobies. That's about it. <laughs> the Adoration of the Magi is an unfinished early painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was given the commission by Augustinian monks of St. Donato and Scopetto in Florence. But he departed for Milan the following year, leaving the painting unfinished. It has been in the Uvizi Gallery in Florence since 1670. Rainbow Body is this painting. Nothing special. It's apparently supposed to represent the Los Angeles sky. Lamentation 
is a fresco painted circa 1305 by Italian artist Giotto as part of his cycle of the life of Christ on the north interior wall of Scrovegni Chapel in Padua, Italy. The Scrovegni Chapel was built as a private chapel next to Aramonte Monastery by well to do Scrovegni family and consecrated in 1305. Between 1304 and 1306, Giotto decorated the inside walls and ceilings of the chapel with a series of frescoes depicting scenes from the Bible, including the Life of Christ series. The works are considered a masterpiece. Both the monastery and the chapel now form a part of the Musi Savisi di Padova. Giotto is described as a Proto-Renaissance artists preceding and paving the way for early Florentine Renaissance painters, breaking the artistic mode of the Byzantine period by introducing naturalism and death in his work. In the painting, Christ's body has been lowered from the cross and laid on the ground, surrounded by his grieving family and friends. His head is being held by the Virgin Mary and his feet by Mary Magdalene. Behind them, John the Baptist throws his arms wide in despair. To the right, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea wait to prepare the body to be laid to rest. Summer's Day is a painting by French Impressionist painter Bertin Morisot. The painting depicts two women seated in a rowboat and was painted in the Bois de Boulogne. More so, employed a rather unusual palette in this painting. She painted the dark blue coat of the woman on the left with cerulean blue, which was rarely used by the Impressionists. The green foliage is painted with a mixture of emerald green, viridian, lead white, and cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow was not yet widely used at this time. And finally, to finish this tier off, is another Andy Warhol painting. Silver Car Crash. It is a 1963 serigraph by the American artist Andy Warhol. It depicts a body twisted and mangled interior of a silver car. It was printed by Andy Warhol at the age of 35. Is the last serigraph of the artist that was left in private hands. The serigraph is 8 by 13 feet in dimensions and was displayed only once in public during the last 26 years. The painting was part of his Death and Disaster series. And this finishes part 2 of this iceberg. Be sure to look out for the final part coming out soon. As like always, like, comment, and subscribe, and have a nice day.